Well, good afternoon. Um, let me just start by uh, saying that all of us in the Republican Conference uh, are wishing Leader McConnell uh, the very best and um, in his recovery and look forward to having him back. But in, uh, in the meantime, we're going to be talking about the contrast, the differences between Republicans and Democrats. And there's probably no better example of that than the President's budget, which came out on Monday. And you know, most President's budgets, when they come out, they always refer to them as being dead on arrival. Uh, this particular proposal is dead wrong when it comes to its priorities. And I'll just start with the spending and debt. It's going to grow the, uh, the federal debt, if you can believe this, in the next 10 years up to $50 trillion. Um, in terms of just the spending itself, we heard today at lunch, 55 percent increase in spending uh, since 2019 and at a time when the population of the country was only growing at 1.8 percent. Almost $5 trillion in tax increases on job creators and small businesses in this country. And um, if you look at just the, the overall picture of where they prioritize, where they spend their money, that's where it really gets disturbing. Because they actually increase the IRS's budget uh, by 15 percent. And a $30 billion increase over and above the $80 billion increase that they got last August and the 87,000 new employees they got last August. Now think about that. Uh, they only add 350 people to the Border Patrol to police the southern border, which is we all acknowledge is a national emergency, national security crisis. And, um, and then they fund defense at below the rate of inflation. 3% increase for inflation or for uh, defense, 15% increase for the IRS. If that doesn't talk about what your priorities are, I don't know what is. So um, this budget is, uh, is dead on arrival, and uh, the ama massive amount of spending and taxing and borrowing that uh, is included in it is something that um, not only Republicans here in the Senate are going to do everything we can to stop, but I believe the American people are going to be on our side. Thank you. I I'm glad that we are talking about budgets um, today because we all know that what President Biden put forward, it is so out of touch and is very unaffordable. And Iowans comment about this as they've watched the news. Uh, they see that President Biden intends to raise taxes. He is killing jobs with his budget proposal, and he's hurting our small businesses. Uh, Again, Iowans see that it's reckless. Americans know this. I'm glad they're paying attention. And because they are paying attention, and it is Sunshine Week, what we would like to see is more transparency out there. And we need President Biden to fully explain the budget that he's put forward. But beyond that, I'm forcing our federal agencies to put a public price tag on all of the taxpayer-funded uh, projects. Uh, all of us are paying for these projects, and you've heard about some of them out there. You know, the old adage of shrimp on a treadmill or pampering your kitties. Um, whatever experimentation the federal government is doing, whatever projects they are working on, the public needs to know about it, and they need to know how much of their hard-earned dollars are going to those projects. So uh, again, we need to shine light on these projects that are out there. It is sunshine week. We need more transparency within our federal government. Let's start today, folks, and let's get a little accountability out there. Well, thank you all for being here. I would like to add uh, to what Senator Thune said about all of our thoughts uh, and how much we miss our leader, uh, Senator McConnell. I would like to say we miss having Senator Barrasso with us here today. Uh, he, as many of you know, has uh, health issues within his family, so please offer him up in your, in your thoughts and prayers during, during this time and his family. Uh, and as Joni said, a, a budget is a set of priorities. Uh, whether it's dead on arrival or, uh, or in some form or fashion, it is a reflection of what the president really and where he puts his emphasis. John mentioned the IRS. I'm going to mention the 19 percent increase in the EPA and the 1 percent cut in Homeland Security. There's a cut in small business. There's a cut in transportation. 
These are what the president's priorities are. He, he's prioritizing through not just the dollar figures, but the rhetoric contained within the summary. So if you look at the summary of the budget, which is what we were looking at last week, one of the priorities that I have, and we all have, and we should all have as a nation, is to stop the flow of fentanyl and all the deaths that are causing it. In my state of Western New York, 1,100 people died from fentanyl overdoses. They mentioned fentanyl twice in the budget. They mentioned climate change 42 times. And that, I think, is a reflection of where this administration is, wants to spend our taxpayers' dollars and overspend our taxpayers' dollars and not solve the problems. They actually have in their Department of Homeland Security budget their own built-in supplemental surge pricing. So if you, uh, if you, if a million, I'm, I'm pulling these figures out, they're not exactly accurate. You have a certain amount of people that come over the border because there's no deterrence, so we know this is going to happen. That means you're going to get another several hundred millions of dollars to, to, to deal with the problem that you're creating because of the lack of the policies within your administration. So I think that the more and more that we see what's going on in this budget, and the more we see the reflection of the, of the President's priority and his party's priorities, much more spending, uh, much more spending that's going to be reflected down to individual citizens. I think we're going to see as the administration people come before us, which as Joni said, transparency is the best way and questioning is the best way, we're going to see that the priorities that this bu budget sets put us on a track of overspending, more debt, more deficit, and a weaker position as a country. So we've been watching President Biden and the Senate Democrats' very reckless financial policies, and we're seeing crisis after crisis after crisis, and now the chickens are coming home to roost. Wasteful spending has led to the highest inflation rates we've seen in the United States in 40 years. And now these bank bailouts are going to put Montana banks and Montana families on the hook for the mismanagement of a Bay Area bank. Why is it that well-managed and sound Montana banks that didn't fail are going to be on the hook to pay for a mismanaged Bay Area bank that did? The same thing was true with President Biden's bogus student debt transfer, forcing Montanans who maybe didn't go to college to now pay for somebody else's loans. The last thing the federal government should be doing is taking the side of wealthy elites over hardworking Montanans. We need to return some fiscal sanity back to Washington. Montanans can't afford this administration's and the Senate Democrats' fiscal restlessness. Senator, 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 Senator. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Do you get a sense from your fellow senators that they are struggling to figure out what to do about SVB because there's echoes of 2008, concerns the way the TARP went down, that a legislative solution is very hard to come to an agreement on because of those echoes? Well, I think that most of our members, first and foremost, want to have the question answered uh, by the regulators, what happened? I mean, how, how come they were asleep at the switch and didn't see this coming? I mean, these are pretty obvious indicators, uh, and there's still a lot of unrealized losses on the balance sheets of banks around the country. Um, and uh, this clearly, if you look at uh, the particular circumstances around this incident, um, should have been anticipated. Senator and so, Senator and so those are the questions we're going to want to get the answer to. Senator, 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 what message does it send to Vladimir Putin when one of the leading contenders, potential contenders for the Republican presidential nomination, says that this is not a vital interest for the United States in this war in Ukraine and that it's more, nearly a territorial dispute? Well, I mean, I think that uh, there are lots of different opinions on U.S. involvement in Ukraine, but I think the majority opinion among Senate Republicans is that uh, the United States had a, has a vital national security interest there in stopping Russian aggression, and, uh, and that's certainly the view I have. Senator, so, have you specifically and directly spoken with Leader McConnell? I have not spoken with him. I have communicated with him, um, but uh, we look forward to making that happen. How do you communicate with him? Well, text. Yeah. Yeah. Should there be unlimited guarantees of bank deposits 
deposits to prevent these deposits from leaving the smaller banks from bigger banks? Well, I think I heard. I think you heard uh, Steve Dane speak to this, but there would be a lot of concern uh, among people in most parts of the country, and certainly in rural parts of the country, that have banks that operate well, that are well managed, um, well capitalized. Although capital wasn't really the issue with. Uh, SVB, it was a liquidity issue, but I think there are people across the country who are watching this closely and are going to try to determine whether or not they're going to be on the hook for a lot of this mismanagement. But again, I would come back to the thing we want to get answered first and foremost is where did the regulators fail? Why did we not anticipate this and see this coming, um, knowing full well that there were lots of warning signs that should have tipped the regulators off? Senator, what's the appetite on your side? Depending on how this investigation turns out, if they do say that regulators didn't have enough tools um, to prevent something like Silicon Valley Bank failure from happening, would there be any appetite on your side of the aisle to consider tougher regulations by legislation? I think, we, you know, we would, we, obviously we want to get all the facts in, and, um, and I think that's where oversight comes into play. And we have a number of committees of, of jurisdiction, um, namely the Banking Committee, who I hope are going to get to the bottom of uh, the questions that we have about uh, why the the exam process, the supervision process failed um, before we get to that, that next question. I mean, if there are clear, there are ideas out there that people have, um, you know, at some point we would be willing to entertain those, but I think it would be premature to start talking about solutions before we fully define the problem and, uh, and ultimately get answers from the regulators about why they were asleep at the job. Senator, 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 Thank you.